In this video, I'm going to demonstrate for you some of the different tools that make up this class of technology called business process management or business process management suites. Depending upon the scope of your initiative and the complexity of that initiative, you might start out with simply more business process analysis tools, tools to help you perform documentation of processes or just designing and analyzing them. And or you might move all the way through completely re-engineering your business systems or processes. And so BPMS tools really cover this broad spectrum of capabilities and the tools vary. So there are tools that, again, that fall into this class of business process analysis tools and they simply let us visually depict our processes. With this tool, like all of these tools, you drag and drop icons from the palette that represent different characteristics of the process, in this case a task that a human being might perform. And then you can link those tasks together to represent how the flow of work might move from one step in the process to another. And you can see you can annotate the process and do things like that. So this helps us visually depict the steps that we go through, what they are, and what we need to do. It helps everybody understand the process. Some of these tools also then have the ability to publish or export these documents. Um, for example, you can create a Word document. So if I wanted to produce a policy from this process flow diagram, for example, some tools allow you then to actually export it into Microsoft Word. So at each step in the flow, you can add attributes, you know, such as the name of the step, what is done at this step, maybe who performs it, uh, and other information, and then produce a document. So you can see here that my Word document gets automatically generated and it includes the process flow diagram. And then as I said, it will include any information that I had entered into each step within the process. Let's take a look then at analysis. Again, we would start with a process that we've modeled. And in this particular tool, we can enter information at each step, such as the amount of time that we expect a given activity to take to perform and how much waiting time there'll be in between activities or once the item is received. Then we can use calculations, time calculations or critical path analysis to show us things like the longest path through the model. So what we can see is that based on a certain condition, one path is going to be longer through the process than the other. And we can also look at things like the time that it will actually take then to get from one step to the other. So I can see if I start this process on 9-12, it's going to take me a full day to get to the end if I take this particular path. How does this help me from a business standpoint? Well, if I'm going to establish a turnaround time or a service level for a process, by being able to project that based on the way the current process is working, it'll tell me whether or not, for example, that's achievable and what kinds of things might I need to do to change the process in order to achieve that particular service level or turnaround time. Other types of tools provide full simulation. Again, with simulation tools, we start out with a model of our process and in this case, we enter data or information Things like resources um, would be one type of thing. How many resources and what type of resources do we have to perform a given step? And with most simulation tools, you then, when you run the simulation, you run it for a given period of time, a month, a week, a year, and you utilize some type of load profile, how many are you receiving, at what interval, and those types of things. And once you run the simulation, the simulator can show you a bunch of statistical reports, but in addition, it can also show you where bottlenecks are potentially forming. So some will actually show you the visual flow of work, and you can then begin to see where the bottlenecks occur in the process. And by having this type of information, 
what this type of reporting and this type of bottleneck determination helps us do is it helps us experience the process before we invest in changing our business systems or reallocating resources. It lets us simulate how that process would behave if in fact we made those types of changes. This concludes part one of our video. In the next video, I'll transition from BPA tools to the broader spectrum of BPMS tools.